Well, there we go. That was that was the police. That was the police. Not actually coming into the studio, although they'd probably <laughs> like to to shut me down. <laughs> but one of one of my all time favourite drummers as well, and probably Richard, who's on Zoom with us at the moment, Richard Colburn, um, probably one of his favourite drummers as well. Is he up there for you then? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, because he had that sort of youthful, uh, sort of punk attitude, but with like, um, like it was that kind of reggae thing that he did. You know, the halftime stuff. Oh, just yeah. he, he kind of played in a kind of different way to most drummers doing that type of thing around then you know he, he had a he had definitely his own signature i think they were all that had their unique ways i mean some yeah. of on on the guitar almost a jazz guitarist yeah. with a bit of yeah. rock oh, it was amazing yeah. obviously sting i mean what what a voice what a bass player i yeah. mean it goes without saying so yeah for me one of the one of the greatest bands ever so yeah i'm glad you glad you picked them up so look let's get back into it so we're talking about sort of your youth and growing up and stuff like yeah. that did, did you ever take any drum lessons uh, when you were younger richard I did, yeah, like formally, probably at school for a little bit. Um, and, you know, my, my, my family being quite prominent in Perth as musicians, I kind of knew a lot of the drum teachers because they played with my grandfather because he had a big accordion orchestra and they would play weddings up and down the length of the country. So, yeah, first time was at school. And then after the fact, maybe in my 20s, uh, well, when I moved to Glasgow in 95, I, would, I, I went to Ted McKenna, who um, sadly passed away a few years ago, but he oh. played in um, um, the Sensational Alex Harvey Band. Wow. Don't get a lot bigger than that. Phenomenal. He was mates with, like, um, John Bonham and all that back in the day. Wow. Um, what's the guy from Thin Lizzy again? I'll come back to me. But that's, you know, that's the guy who was cutting about in the 70s. And what a drummer. So anyway, he used to do private lessons and he was just a great guy. Um, so I, I kind of went to him briefly, but I actually, you know, I, I, I started um, taking lessons again online. Um, there's a guy called Bruce Becker, who's who um, Freddie Gruber's like the a very, very, very famous old American teacher, died a number of years ago. He's like mm. the, the Yoda of drums. Mm. And he was one of his disciples kind of thing. Wow. So I, I kind of started taking lessons with him. Um, uh, and there's so much great stuff online, you know, and, and you know, it's good. There is. Well, talking about uh, teaching, I, I I I did hear a rumor that you're a, a drum teacher as well. Is that is that the case? Yeah, I just just started up. You know, I just um um uh through my drum lessons dot uh, dot uk um uh who are fantastic. So I, I have a drum room which I'm sitting in now uh, in our studio, and I thought, well, I've got all this experience and know how and doing different things over the years, whether it be live and studio and so on and so forth. I might, you know, it'd be great to get into teaching. So, um, so yeah, that's what I've kind of starting to do now. So uh, I do lessons face to face. I'm about to start to do online lessons if anybody's Brilliant. interested at all. Um, the address is mydrumlessons.co.uk forward slash Richard Colburn. That's C-O-L-B-U-R-N. Okay, so my, let me just get that again. So my, M-Y, my drum, yep. D-R-U-M, U-M. lessons, L-E-S-S-O-N-S. Yep co.uk because we're in yep. the uk yeah uh, forward slash richard colburn yeah that's the very oh, one fantastic stuff fantastic if you, stuff. If you go to the main site for my drum lessons.co.uk uh, there's a lot of information on that there uh, and you can start moving forward Rink it brilliant i love it i love it so people from norfolk uh, don't have to go all the way to glasgow every week <laughs> to have a famous uh, drummer teach them they can just get online and take their lessons from there that is amazing so people you want drum lessons you know where to go now mydrumlessons.co.uk just get yourself on there that, that's fantastic stuff um and um yeah when it when it comes let's get back into the other things kit wise what yeah. do you use what, what, what gear have you got well, uh, do you know what? I used to have quite a few kits. I've only got two kits at the moment. Uh, the main kit I'm using just now um, is one called, as I look at it, um, um, it's a modern drum shop of New York City, which uh, I bought this in about 1997 in Manhattan as a really famous old drum maker. Um, I forget his name off the top of my head, but anyway, <laughs> um, as I, as I not normally forget things. Uh, but he used to build a lot of jazz kits for a lot of jazz drummers. Bernard Puddy had a few of those. He sold a lot in Japan, a lot of Japanese jazz drummers for some reason love these kits. But anyway, I was I was in doing a gig in New York back then uh, and I walked past this warehouse on West 46th Street, which is like the music street, like the Denmark street of New York, all, like Manny's and all these famous music stores are on the street. There's a little plaque on the wall and it says um, 
modern jump shot of New York. Well, that's intriguing. So it's up two flights of stairs, up a go. It's a big warehouse. And these amazing drum kits just all over this warehouse, just set up. And I sat down at this drum set and um, it was it was second hand. Somebody had ordered three kits and only took, they only took two kits and there was one left over. Oh. So effectively, it wasn't really played, but it was, you know, it was second hand, so to speak. So uh, it was pretty cheap at the time uh, and I bought it and, and I sent it over to Glasgow. And uh, I've used it on so much, mostly everything, actually. I still take it on the road, although I'm thinking it's, you know, the, the rigours of the road, it's an older kit. Mm. You, you know, you don't want to push it too much. But I've had it on the road for years in the studio. It just sounds amazing. Uh, and you wow. can tune it, and it's very versatile with its tuning as well. You can make it sound big, you can make it sound jazzy, you can, you know, do a lot of stuff with it. Oh, look, we're, we're going to hear you playing drums in a, in a second. But I, before we do... Not live. I, I just want to... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're not a lot of live. Well, maybe we could. Um, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I want to talk a bit. Snow Patrol, uh, uh, you know, one of the biggest bands and you know especially chasing cars and stuff yeah. that everyone knows about that but i know you you had a lot to do with them in the earlier days even before they were called snow patrol so how did you get the gig well basically they were on the same record label as us we um we, we signed to a small indie label called jeepster um oh. and i think it was 1996 or thereabouts and snow patrol were, were called at the time shrug and then they changed the name to polar bear polar bear who, Polar Bear, yeah, I, I, who are already on Jeepster. So we joined, um, and they're from Belfast, so we, we, we kind of signed up to the label, and they didn't have a drummer at the time. Oh. So I kind of, you know, because they were label mates, became friends with them and said, listen, would you mind helping us out by playing drums just now until we can get another drummer? Because um, we didn't really tour very much at the beginning, so I had mm. plenty of time. So that's how I kind of got to know them, and that's how I got to play with them. So, yeah, um, things went from south to south. We're like brothers, you know, just like the very, very close friends. Um, so I played on the first single as Polar Bear, but then, as luck would have, another band in America were called Polar Bear who had no. bigger lawyers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Etc. So, but it kind of worked out because then they changed the name to Snow Patrol and things went okay. <laughs> Didn't it? So we'll talk about a bit more about that in a minute. But, but as Polar Bear, I believe they had, a, they had a, a, a single out called uh, Starfighter Pilot. Is, is that right? Yes, that's, and that's right. One, that's one you played on? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, let's have a listen to that now and we'll come back after this. <laughs> <laughs> 